So, why do you want to study medicine? Yeah, um, so I'm very passionate about medicine. I really like the medical field and becoming a doctor and being able to help people. I'm also really empathetic as well, which is really important in the medical field when you're interacting with so many patients. I really try and understand people's emotions quite well. And I've also had sick people in the family and have accompanied them to hospitals. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Darren and I just finished my fourth year of med school at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. If your answer sounds a bit like the one earlier in the video, then it's not bad, but as you may have noticed, there are definitely areas to improve upon. The components and the enthusiasm are there, but the expression of those ideas and the structure is not that great. You may be preparing for your medical interviews, whether that be at Monash University where I'm studying or at other unis. And so today I thought I would share three strategies to really be well prepared for those interviews. And the video will be split into three parts, kind of answering three questions. The first question being what to know or what should I know for the interview? Second one, how do I act during the interview? And the third one is how do I present my ideas to the interviewer? Enjoy. There's definitely not an immense amount of information to learn. It's not like preparing for written exams, but I would say there are two areas that you wanna brush up on. One are your personal questions, and two are general medical issues that you may be asked about. Firstly, looking at the personal questions, there are definitely questions that you can anticipate will come up and are just pretty normal questions in any kind of interview. So these include, why do you wanna study medicine? What are your good qualities that mean you're suitable to become a doctor? Um, when is a time you've had to make a difficult decision? When is a time you had to work in a team? And if you had a bit of time, these questions are not too hard to answer, but even the most basic question, like tell me about yourself, if you ask someone on the street that and they haven't prepared for it beforehand, it's a pretty difficult question because you have to reflect on a lot of experiences to come up with an answer. So with these questions, you can I, I recommend writing them out and then either writing your answer out completely or just having a think about your rough areas that you're gonna speak about. So for me, I, find it, I found it quite useful to just think of the qualities I would speak about and think about what personal examples I have and then just practice answering the question and presenting it and explaining it to an interviewer. The second area is general medical issues that the field is facing. And it's useful to think about why there are these difficulties at the moment and how to solve them, whether that be methods that are already implemented or methods that you think uh, that you have as ideas. So current issues include increasing access to healthcare in rural areas and increasing the number of doctors who work there. Uh, also increasing collaboration and uptake of Western medicine in Aboriginal communities and even AI as well. You know, is it taking over our jobs and how do we manage it with privacy and just with medicine in general? So thinking about why those are key issues, so why aren't many doctors staying in rural areas, why don't Aboriginal communities have great relationships with Western medicine, and then how to solve them. So for example, currently you have particular rural cohorts just allocated to students who will be placed rurally or even you know select places just for rural students. So that's to help with increasing uh, healthcare workers in rural areas. And thinking about ideas that you have as well for improving these situations. This part is mostly about body language and how you're presenting yourself. So most of your interviews are likely going to be online. And in that case, I really recommend the kind of setup that you can see from me here. So I talk with my hands, especially in quite formal situations. It makes me more comfortable. I feel like I engage better with other people too. And so when I'm moving my hands, you can see a good amount of my body that I move my hands. It's natural. It's not kind of just poking up and down like this, as some people have. And I try to keep my hands separate as well, rather than clasping them together. So on Zoom, being able to see a good amount of your body, so you appear confident. So there's kind of that engagement with the examiner. And even if you don't use your hands, I think this is a good amount of space to have. And if you do use your hands, making sure you move them intentionally and in a really good view of the camera. 
A really good way of practicing body language, although it may be pretty painful, is to just record yourself, turn off the volume, and play your video at you know 1.5 speed, and just see what kind of uh, demeanor and what kind of what kind of presentation you are giving to the examiner. So does it seem like you're enthusiastic, you're engaged, or does it seem like you're not really talking about something you're very interested in? So give that a go and mess around a bit with your body language to see what gives off the best impression. How do you actually present your ideas to the interviewer? You could have a lot of great ideas and a lot of points you want to make, but it can all come out as a mumbled mess if you don't have a structure and you don't present it well. So the first step is to actually have a structure and I would keep my structure pretty simple because then it's easy for the examiner to follow and also allows me and frees up my mind to think about my ideas and develop them in more depth rather than worrying about what my structure is as well. So usually my structure would follow along with the natural flow of the question. So if the question was, what are the key issues in this scenario? My structure would just be issue one is, issue two, another issue, and just separate it like that. If the question was, what would you do in this scenario? My structure would just be action one, action two, action three. And if the question was a yes, no question, such as, do you think this is beneficial? Is this the right thing to do? I would just answer it as yes, because of, no, because of. And I found this just, just really straightforward. It's hard to communicate structure already when you're talking to someone. So keeping it simple and then developing the ideas more was my focus and I found it worked well. Now, the second part is to actually make your structure obvious. So you may have a structure, but how do you actually show your examiner that you're moving from one point to another or that you're making an important point? Because it's not like a written exam where the examiner can reread things and also you can see how things are split by their body paragraphs. And so you have to do it with your voice. You can change up your voice a bit or a really good way is to pause as well. The first issue is that Matthew has made an inappropriate comment towards Alan. This comment is derogatory and antagonistic and will downplay Alan's achievements, creating a rift between the two friends. The second issue is that Alan's feelings may be hurt in this interaction. It's important for me to be able to speak to him as he is a close friend of mine. The third issue is that there is this underlying idea of discrimination in medical settings. You know, some people find it difficult to change their voice up and down, particularly if that's you know, not your natural style of talking. But I highly recommend giving it a go. And you actually need to exaggerate a lot for it to even sound mildly different. So just give it a go and see how you sound. But pausing is definitely something I recommend when you're moving from one large point to another. And it just breaks up all that speaking a bit for the examiner and allows your answers to be easier to track and follow along with. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have any questions about medical interviews, please drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, enjoy your prep, enjoy your holidays, and I look forward to seeing you all next time.